For this lesson, we are going to be posting the totals uh, from our different journals. To begin with, we are going to post the October 31st column totals from the sales journal. So we have to go back and look at 11-2, and here's our sales journal. And we are going to be posting the column totals for our special columns. So first of all, we have an accounts receivable debit. So we're going to find our accounts receivable. And then we put in the date, the 31st. And this is sales journal, page 10. And it is a debit of 7,377. 60. We currently have a debit balance, so we're going to add those together. And I come up with 8,600. 162.33. Then we have account number 1130. So we're going to come to our sales journal and we put 1130 underneath that and put parentheses around it. And that's how we indicate that we have posted that entry. Okay, next we have our sales credit column. So we need to find our sales account in the ledger. We put in the date, the 31st, sales journal, page 10. And the total was 6,960 credit. And we currently have a credit, so we're gonna add these together. And I come up with 240,000, to write really small, 295. And then that's account 4110. We come back here, write in 4110 inside parentheses to indicate that we've posted that total. Okay, our last column total to post is to sales tax payable credit. So we come here to our sales tax payable account, put in the 31st, sales journal page 10, and it is 417.60. We currently have a credit, so we're going to add those together. And I have 1,824.48, account number 2140. We'll come back here and write in 2140 and put parentheses around it. All right, so our totals are posted for the sales journal. Next up, we're going to post the totals of the purchases journal. And that's found back in 11-1. Here's our purchases journal. Now we have one column, but it's a purchases debit and an accounts payable credit. So we have to post it twice. We'll start with the purchases debit. So we put in the 31st. And then this is the purchases journal page 10, so we'll put in a P10, and it is a purchases debit of 11,818.40. We need to add those two numbers together. And I come up with 118,000, 
$378 even. Now that's account number 5110. So we're going to come back here and we're going to put 5110 at the bottom over to the side because we have one more to post. We also have to post this to accounts payable credit. So we're going to find our accounts payable credit or our accounts payable account. Put in the 31st purchases journal page 10 and this is a credit so we'll go to the credit column 11,000 818.40 and then we have a credit and a credit so we're going to add those together and I end up with 16,755 20. That's account number 2110. So we come back here and put in 2110 inside a second set of parentheses. And that takes care of the purchases journal. Next we have the cash receipts journal, which is found back in 11-2. And we're going to post all of the totals here. So first up is an accounts receivable credit. So we'll go to our accounts receivable, put in the 31st, and this is CR for cash receipts, page 12. And this is a credit of 6,360. So we have a debit and a credit. That means we're going to subtract. And that leaves me a balance of 2,302.33. Then we take that number 1130. and put that underneath that column to indicate that it was posted. Next we have sales credit. So we'll find our sales account, put in the 31st, cash receipts, page 12, so CR 12, and then a sales credit of 18,000, 320. We have a credit and a credit, so we'll add those together. And we're up to 258,615. And then that's account 4110. We put that underneath to indicate that it was posted. Next up is sales tax payable credit. Put in the 31st. Cash receipts page 12. And it's a credit 1099.40. We have a credit and a credit, so we'll add those. And I come up with 2,923.68. That's account number 2140, which we put in parentheses underneath that column. Next is sales discount debit. Put in the 31st, cash receipts page 12. 
And this is a debit of $31.40. We currently have a debit, so we'll add those together. And I come out with $2,229.40. And then we write the account number 4120 underneath. Next is a cash debit. So we'll go to our cash account. Put in the 31st. Cash receipts page 12. And it's a debit of 25000 747.80. We currently have a debit, so we're going to add these together. And it looks like I get 38,000. 983.38. And then we take that account number, 1110, and put that in parentheses underneath that column total. All right, we have one more journal to post the totals from, and that would be the cash payments journal. We don't have to post the general columns, so our first special column is Accounts Payable Debit. So we go to our Accounts Payable account, put in the 31st, and this is CP for Cash Payments, 15. And we have a debit of $8,656. Our current balance is a credit, so we're going to subtract those two. And I end up with 8,099.20. Then that's account 2110. Let me write that underneath the accounts payable debit column. Next, we have the Purchases Discount Credit. So we'll go to our Purchases Discount account, put in the 31st, Cash Payments 15, and it's a credit of 128.48. Current balance is a credit, so we'll add those together. And new balance is $1,387.33. That's account 5120. And we write that in parentheses under that special column. Last, we have cash credit. So we'll go back to our cash account. Put in the date of the 31st. Cash payments 15. And in the credit column, put in 18704 16. We currently have a debit balance, so we need to subtract those. And I end up with 19,279.20. Account number 1110. 
is written underneath that special column. You are now ready to do the on your own.